if you go downstairs to the Sands, you'll see our fashion shows. We're very proud of what we built here. Um, we think that CES needed to tell more stories about how to build industries, the kids' industry being one important one. We do family tech, uh, fitness, uh, digital health, uh, digital money now as we convert to new currencies and digital wallets. What does that mean for normal people um, and when they don't carry cash anymore? Uh, Cybersecurity, 3,000 products get launched here every year, but like none of them have thought much about security. So we look for all the holes of the stories people haven't told about this industry and try and tell them. And so, where is my colleague here? Um, I want to bring up Catherine Teitelbaum. Uh, while we're, we're waiting for David Pogue to join us. He's here. Oh, we're not waiting for David there Pogue. There is a Pogue in the this house. Is, this is amazing. Um, and so, um, we want you to take 15 minutes of your time to talk about this industry because it's really important because sometimes we suffer unanticipated consequences and I think if you had to nail a moment in time that technology is at, it's like, oh my gosh, what have we wrath? Um, we wanted to protect kids and their best interests and engage them in new technologies and we have succeeded in some ways and failed in others. Catherine Teitelbaum has been involved uh, in regulation and legislation and watching out for kids' interest from the early days of Yahoo, uh, Kidzania, uh, AOL. Not AOL. Not AOL. Not AOL. No. Yahoo, Yahoo Hooligans, and uh, Kidzania, Ask FM most recently. So I wanted her to tell you a little bit about how we got here, and then I want to open up to you because we need answers about how we get out of here. So, do you want to click? Sure. Um, so we, we put up some visuals just to show the difference. How many people are familiar with the Children's Online Privacy Protection Act? Okay. Um, that was written in 1998. It was um, the world at that point. I put you hooligans up there. I went to the Wayback Machine and said, oh, look at it. Because look at how little was going on, and look at what we're looking at now if you want to look for something good for your kids. Yahooligans was Yahoo's answer to trying to create a directory of age appropriate for, say, six-year-olds to 12-year-olds. And the primary goal of COPPA um, was really to put parents in control of what, was what information was collected about their kids. And this was a marketing role, because there were lots of banner ads and there were lots of advertising campaigns at that time that were trying to collect information so that they could sell you better cereal or games. And people were a little freaked out by how much information was being asked about children and did parents know. Now there were some, as Robin says, there were some really surprising unintended consequences. And when you flash forward to today and think about those consequences, the rule says that any child under 13 cannot register, provide any information without a parent, parent's consent. Sounds great, I'm on board, I have a 10 year old, I'm totally on board. But what has happened is that it also set, doesn't prevent, just like, this, from 2000 to now, the same is true. We don't know who's at the other side of your device pushing the nuts. As an industry person, I don't know who's pushing the buttons or swiping this, the screen. So what has happened to our kids since that? And Robin and I just wanted to do some kind of a, a, a quick top five things from our perspective, how this impacted the industry and how this in impacted how our children use devices now and apps. The number one thing that happened and I say this as somebody who was getting advertising money from the industry as well as supporting and creating different uh, websites was there was an immediate decrease the day that law went into effect in the number of small content providers. These were people who were creating, for the most part, very high quality, very targeted content for children. But in order to do those games, and at that time there was some chat rooms that were really, really popular that were 100% moderated and they had things like canned words so that you could only have an appropriate conversation. Tell, tell us, I'm going to stop you, tell us about the cost of compliance. So the cost Papa. of compliance, so in order to get parental consent, at the time that it launched, you needed to do a couple different things. The law said you could have parents um, fax in their permission. You could run, <laughs> mm -hmm, and, or you could have them snail mail in 
their permission, and then the, you, on the behind the scenes could set it up. Or you could have a credit card verification. I don't think anyone talked to the credit card companies, <laughs> because when we did at Yahoo and said, okay, we're gonna do credit card, because we're in the you know, hundreds of millions of users at least at that time, um, we, did, we talked to the credit card companies and they're like, are you crazy? This is not, this is gonna cost us money. We're gonna charge you for this. And we ended right. up, at Yahoo, we had the scale and we had the resources. We built a credit card verification. At the time, we were the only ones I knew of that did it. We did include a charge to parents that was nominal, less than 10 cents, just so that the, the credit card companies could take their cuts and so that um, they could verify that there was a real grown-up on the other side. And then we donated the money back to advocate, child, online safety advocacy groups. And you could, you could afford that. We could afford that. We were at, I was at Princeton Review then, and uh, we made a really simple two-minute decision. We're not talking to kids under 13 anymore. And that's uh, what it's everybody It's way decided. too expensive. And, and if you remember, if you remember all of the websites and all of the online content that was so promising, we lost so much of it. So and much. so many talented people who said, no more under 13. Whereas, are they still in the room? Whereas a Facebook who didn't exist <laughs> doesn't talk to under 13 year olds in 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 uh, you know according to their policies wasn't subject to any of these um, no it was just people roles. who said they were creating content for children right. And so, you know, Yahoo did it, we had the resources, but I didn't have any partners at, on Yahooligans who did that at the time. Everybody else said, are you out of your mind? There's no way we're gonna do this. And I can say that even though we did it and we, had, we did the easiest way, the lowest barrier for parents and for kids to sign up, we lost more than 90% of our children in, 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 in what we knew. They were still there. There was no change in the, in the traffic to our games or things like that. We knew the kids were still there. They just went underground. And that's where we put for number five. The top thing is, to Robin's point, like Facebook or any other social media site, um, you know, somebody was mentioning Instagram in one of the last talks about how many kids are using Instagram or Snapchat. They're all underground there. A lot of times with their parents' permission, but we don't know who they are when we're as an industry until they reveal themselves. So if they put up a picture of themselves and says, fourth grade rocks, and they look like they're in fourth grade, and somebody notices it and reports it, somebody behind the scenes is going to look at it and take it down and say, oh, that's an underage user. But for the most part, we are not able to, as an industry, to protect them, to provide content for them, to personalize their experience in an age-appropriate and safe right. manner. Um, so Kappa got revisited, what, two years ago? Yeah, 2008. That, back it's in not happening again for a long time. But, uh, no. yeah. And it, it was revisited and expanded, and things like mobile were taken into account. Right. But as far as, the, you know, as far as making it easier for people to provide really good content for children, making it easier for people to establish a relationship with their parents, I'm not sure that it, we made any steps forward there. Right, so we've established the premise that uh, a law can have... Um, Unexpected. Unexpected, unanticipated consequences. And now fast forward to the age that we're in. Walk the show floor and pretty much everything out there asks you for some personal information or measures something personal. Your footsteps, your heartbeat, your engagement levels, your homework, your ability to go to college. And so everything downstairs, everything in the LVCC, to give you a better customer experience they can do better when they give you personally, when they ask for some personally identifiable information, and it's up to you what you give them. The more they know about you, if Johnny is having trouble with the CH blend in phonics <laughs> and needs more work there, um, it's really good. If somebody loves one feature of your game or not another, if kids are really engaged here but not engaged here, it's very hard to get that information under the present structure. Yeah. So now you're like waiting for the answer. Like, we don't know. I mean, we, we really, uh, we have no idea. Um, but we do know, I think, that the, these laws are long in the tooth. Um, and that they have caused business to fail. There's a huge cost of compliance. And we are willing to sit here and take any suggestions and to take this out of the room. Um, info at familytechsummit.com 
and find out how we can help your businesses. If this is hurting your business, have we made this whole thing up? You're just fine. Um, and, and what we can do. So any thoughts or ideas about um, how to get past this, floor's open. Because there are people with creative solutions. We're seeing some starts. I'd love to hear. First Wait, let me, let me get you a mic because I have a feeling you're going to set us all yeah. straight here. <laughs> um, and can you just say your name and where yeah, you're from? Yeah, um, Brian Silverman. So you're asking, is it hurting us? Well, I, I worked on two projects that had to face this. One was the Scratch Project. Mm -hmm. The answer they gave, which I think is not necessarily in the spirit of the law, but it was within the letter of the law, is just insisting that nobody give their true name. Right. Right. And that, you know, they can register and it's just said register under an alias. Don't tell us who you are or where you are. Tell us your correct age. But um, we don't want to. So can you talk to them? Can you give them a tip or advice? Um, yeah. Anonymously. Okay. Right. You know that, you know, careful duck 23. Right, okay. we could talk to. We have no idea who that right. person so collect, is. So keep it right. anonymous, basically. Yeah, it's, it's keep it anonymous. And the, don't know the who only, the kids are. The just only know thing, their kids. yeah, we, we tell kids to just not tell us anything about their, themselves other than age and gender. Um, right. What does everybody think? Problem solved? Anonymous? Yeah. No. No. It doesn't okay. solve the problem, it's a workaround. It is a good um, workaround. A thing that I thought was very interesting is Hal Abelson wrote a book called Blown to Bits about, do you know that book? He wrote it about six, seven years ago. He said the genie is totally out of the bottle on information collection. The thing that we should do is the next round of legislation should be about information use. Yeah, I agree. That's smart. Okay, so when, well, let's, let's keep you going here. Give, it, give us more on the information use. I, 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 I agree. My, my name is Jeff. I have an 11 year old daughter, and I introduced her to the digital landscape actually after um, learning about Vantage here a few years ago. It was a beautiful opportunity to give her a neat uh, landscape to be in. And I expressed to her, and I don't know if this is uh, so much a specific answer, but it's a thought to throw out there. Um, I said, you know, sweetie, this is going to sound really strange and it's going to sound very opposite to what you're hearing all of your friends and people doing. But the less you put out there today, the stronger you will probably be later. Interesting. Interesting. Can I say something to that? Okay, so I have a beautiful 13-year-old sitting next to me. And one of the things, to your point you just made, is the less that you put out there. She and I had a very open conversation when she was 10. You have a 10-year-old. I have a 10-year-old. Yeah. Right? And I have an 11-year-old now. And that's, I think if we, we can't help. The regulatory, I'm waiting. We're all waiting. It, it's going to be a while. Like that, long tooth. It's like a root canal worse. So all I can, all, all I always want to ask is how, what can we do better? We're very open. She's Amazing. She has 26 posts, and her friends have 2,600 posts. They're buying followers. So the communications have... Oh, <laughs> my gosh. They can buy... And they have, well, you've got Instagram, you've got Finstagram, right? You've got all these different things, Snapchat, we know it all goes away after 24 hours. It's said, one thing, by the way, you parents, if you don't know, you can share your Instagram account. You don't have to look at it with your, with your child. None of their friends know. If you sign up, on yours, but Snapchat, you have to sign out and sign back in. And she's very respectful of the fact that when I want to sign into her account, look at these stories, I don't go to her friends. But the point is, is how do we keep them safe? The only thing I've come up with is communication, which is what you've said. But to your point, how, mm -hmm. how much longer can... When is it going to... But, yeah. Yes. When, how is it going to get solved? So and safety is one here. thing. And s right. safety is clearly a parental discussion, although I would venture to say that nobody here who is a parent is being particularly safe of what they're, no, they're Facebooking not. and tweeting right now, um, myself included. It, I consider it part of my job, my social media persona. Um, but the more important question is, where does service... And, and an invasion of privacy start, I think. So let's just say that you are 13 years old and you're thinking about where you want to go to college and somebody knows that you love horseback riding. Or, you know, there are a million scenarios where knowing you and what you love inspires you. I love technology. Tell me where the... Wouldn't you like to know there was a robotics group forming nearby? So 
for us, it's one issue. And we're somewhat used to it, but we still get duped all the time. But for our children, what are they missing out on is the question as much as are we keeping them safe? Yeah. Does that make sense? Yeah. I think one, co one company I worked with had an interesting solution. And they had the benefit of a real world interaction with children. So it was a small theme park, um, global footprint. And it, when kids came to the park, most of the time they were with a parent. That was a perfect opportunity to be COPPA compliant, get consent from parents to create a personal profile for their children, to create that family relationship, um, and then build from that. And they were able, their, um, the theme park was about career role play. It's called Kidzania. It's not in the United States. Um, but Kidzania's ability then to both market to kids and to provide content and to provide value to their partners was exponential compared to if we had tried to just do it online. Um, yeah, and, and we're, we're not going to dwell on these, but there are some good examples both as revenue generators and as um, some solutions that are working to some degree. Um, it's funny, I, we, we asked kids, we're, Warren and I were at something together recently, I said, do you know what Wikipedia is? And none of them knew. <laughs> they go to YouTube. So I just want you um, to think about that, and um, that was a little 15 minute interlude before um, some levity, I hope. Um, and uh, Randy Zuckerberg, if you get to watch the videotape, spoke about this very eloquently before, and I think the need um, to make the next things about information usage. The next literacy campaign is huge. So thank you. Thank, thank you. you. You're thank awesome. Thank you for having me here.